What is up guys, it's Punkova here for League Top 10 and I am here to show you something a little different that you're not to expect. I am actually doing a spectator mode match right now. As you can see, I'm not actually on the screen here at all. These are just random people on my friends list and friends of friends that decided to help me out and go into a customs game because right now in customs you can actually do the spectator mode. And I'm spectating this with one other person. I'm not actually sure yet if I'll be able to see the other person in the game as in see what they're looking at or anything. But uh, this is my first intro into spectator mode. I'm not actually sure the UI, the UI or the interface, how I move around. I've seen it a little bit in some casts, but haven't got to mess with it myself. And so I thought I would uh, kind of shoutcast this game from this perspective for one time. I don't know the skill level of these guys at all. I just wanted to uh, get a feel for it. And be sure you know, to check back because I'm sure I'll do a more in-depth look and breakdown of specific abilities and stuff. Uh, either based off of this match or I'm sure future testing so there's actually one thing you didn't see is the UI that led up to this and that is the the general interface uh, in general um, delay that there was implemented before I actually got to this point right here so on the normal screen where you choose your champion you can see both sides choosing their champions this was a blind draft but I was able to see both sides and on top of that, I was also able to see that there was a delay of about two and a half minutes before I actually could get to this point. So the game has already been going for two and a half minutes. And I only now was able to come in and I'm watching it from a two and a half minute uh, two and a half minute delay so the game's been going on for two and a half minutes and I'm gonna come in from the beginning but uh, this is to prevent people from being able to like screen look and cheat so I'm, I'm just now looking for it, looking at it now as if it was live uh, one thing I noticed right now is that the interface is incredibly small and I don't actually know if I'll be able to make it larger which is kind of annoying yeah it's so super small here this may be a problem with uh, this and of course wait oh there we go Whoa, for some reason it wasn't coming up in the video. All right, so now I can fix this. More options. Let's go ahead and go to interface, HUD scale, make it really big. And I can see mana damage, gold, etc. like that. I'm going to keep those stock. There we go. Much better. Much better. All right, so here's the standard interface. You can see where they're pinging on this map. And there is it where everybody's speaking. You can see, of course, everybody's... Uh, skills and of course they don't have their ultimate yet but once they do i'll be able to see the cooldown there so we have malzahar here it looks like they're setting up there for a uh a blue for for shaka which is somewhat unique normally people go over here to red and get a level two red and then gank top but it looks like they're just kind of pushing out here you know standard defensive positions for both teams got two down here we got gh panther and we have uh, our little friend here, Kennen, who looks like Kennen's going to a more AD build. Uh, well, of course, Panther's going a, a standard, uh, standard Shawain build, not too bad. And as you can see, if I double click on someone, I actually will lock onto them and be completely on their perspective. See everybody's items here, as well as down here, you can see everybody's items, and you'll be able to see their total CS, how many deaths and things, all that kind of stuff. And as you can see, it's broken up by blue and purple sides, so you know exactly who is talking. And, oh, this looks like it was actually a friend who was uh, whispering me at the same time. So down here on the left, we can see I can actually change it to whoever I want to look at. Uh, just by clicking on them, and it actually goes directly to their interface. Although it doesn't immediately go to them. It looks like, yeah, it looks like he's actually taking their wraiths. But what it actually looks like it does is it just simply looks at their skill cooldowns and doesn't immediately go to click to change to active champion. All right, well, let's see here. I can also, of course, turn Fog of War off so I can see the entire map. But if I wanted to, I can turn that on so I can see exactly only what each team sees. So right here up top, it looks like Garen is actually pulling him then for blue and then going to go to back top. He's going to lose some CS on that, but it's not going to be too bad simply because Garen farms kill, not minions so much. And it uh, looks like we're not going for a level 2 gank with Shaco, just a standard full route, which is uh, a little bit... It's disappointing, I'd say. Most Shackos go for that level 2 gank because you can recover. Even if you fail the level 2 gank, you can still recover and not have to like go back to base because of the Shacko box tanking most of the minions. Looks like Arturo here pushing up. Maybe going to do a Q. Nope. Going to go ahead and do a spin. Gets his spin first. And as you can see here, I can click and see exactly how much people have leveled up their abilities. This is still going to take a while to get used to. Looks like as far as gold wise, it's still even 3.5 to 3.5. This is counting in all the creep kills as well as passive gold gain. 
And we have uh, Arturo here taking some damage from Raiden. Raiden actually not taking too much. Arturo kind of in a little bad position, being too aggressive, taking damage from those minions up there. And uh, now it looks like he's setting up some boxes to do golems. While, uh, of course, Udyr is setting up to do red. So, Sheko is a little bit behind, but just simply because that Udyr did take his uh, race. So, he has to get level 3 off of golems, which means he's also behind because he's going to take more damage from those minions. As opposed to not being level 3. A nice bind there off on GH. GH doing a little bit of harass. Not bad. We have some uh, action going up top here. And so... Yeah, I can just basically click around here and see exactly which skills are up, which ones aren't. And I'm sure there's some hotkeys too. It looks like... Yeah, okay. So, one, two, three, four, five. Ah, okay. So, by doing this, I can actually cycle through them and look exactly who's doing what. So, if uh, you know whoever is actually tied to a certain keybind, you can just kind of go across the map. So, let's see. What's the enemy team? Looks like the enemy team's Q... Oh, okay. So, the enemy team is this. Oh, so we have some action down here. Looks like Master Yu is overextending. However, GH Panther is exhausted and ignited. Looks like he's going to go down first, first blood. Kenny going to have to rush away. Does not look like he'll be able to be taken out. And a nice exhaust and ignite there from Master Yi. Master Yi going a Doran's Blade, while Nunu is going a uh, Doran's Ring. So this is not a typical game where you have the support, double su the support in range bottom. This is just in the game with people that I was able to invite. You know, now it looks like uh, Zora is actually going come has come back and is going to be able to be doing Lizard here. And again, just doing this, GH Panther teleporting back in here. So this is going to take some time to get used to this interface, but this is extremely useful. And once you get used to the uh, movement keys, there we go, get, picking up right there for Zora. You should be able to go across the map extremely quickly. So there. There we go. Sorry for blipping back and forth really quick. I'm just trying to get used to this as we go. And let's see. What else can I do here? I can see only purple. Ah, so we can see it from only purple. Oh, and GH actually gets a kill down there on bottom uh, Master Yu. Looks like Kennen is pushing uh, Nunu back just a bit. Taking an Ice Blast there. Not able to actually get the Lightning Rush off on Poke. Poke Proof. And it looks like Garen is headed back. Raiden perhaps heading back as well. He's sitting at his tower. He could definitely come out here and uh, at least use a Q, but he's going to wait until he gets under the tower. Oh, no, a Turo is back. I forgot that I had it on purple. So, yeah, definitely is going to take a while. Let me go ahead and turn off Fog of War for now so you can see the entire map here. The Fog of War is definitely useful whenever you want to see exactly what the enemy team or what a certain side can see. For example, from my side here, uh, Arturo cannot see him. Oh, he's coming up from the back, though. Arturo looks to not have seen that puff of smoke there, but the fear does miss Arturo, so Arturo is going to be able to run away. However, there goes the exhaust, possible ignite. There's the ignite, and Arturo is going to get taken down there. 300 gold for Zora Hound and the assist for Raidens. Meanwhile, GH Panther did take out Nunu no bottom. <laughs> and there's some uh, love coming in there from Garen, despite. Uh, I'm going to say that he died because he was uh, saying things about me, so. I'll let that slide. You're saying good things. So you look down here. You can see everybody's items without having to go and actually click on them. Two Doran's rings there for Nunu. We have Madrid's now for Shaco. And we have Udyr who went back and got his boots of speed. Opting for that instead of the Madrid's razor first. Which is um, something when you're going Phoenix Stance with Udyr. You don't have to get Madrid's as early because Phoenix Stance simply allows you to AoE creeps down much faster than having the Madrid's single target. If you want to go single target DPS, then you could get a Madrid's and then go Tiger Stance instead. But it looks like he is poking up here just to see if Blue is available. Blue is indeed available. Shaco is on the other side of the map. Too low. He is going to have to go back. I don't think he'll be able to do Blue. So he's going to tether Blue and actually counter it. Looks like there is a ping going off there. Wanting a gank on Malzahar. Having a little bit of trouble perhaps. Although Malzahar is low on... on uh, Mana. Has Malzahar used his ulti? No, he has not used his ulti there. And meanwhile, we have Ryze also has his ulti. And Garen now also has his ulti. Let's see here. So it's five? No. There he is. Three. Garen's on three. So having to be pushed back there. Raiden's using his uh, spell shield to actually mitigate that damage though. His fear is coming up in two seconds there. Oh, another gank on bottom there. Udyr coming bottom with that blue and getting a nice gank off there on Master Yi. 
Terra going back in the brush, going to try to come around, do a little bit of damage. Keeping him off the mini line. Raiden does not want to take... Raiden can absorb the Q, but if Arturo baits it out, then he can make him waste it. Waste that mana, and then, of course, come back with that Q. So here's the Q. And misses the spell shield. Having to be pushed back, puts his spell shield way too late. He may be having some lag issues there, but completely missing it. Meanwhile, GOH and uh, Kinnon pushing up on bottom. Is Kinnon going? Yes. No, Kinnon isn't going uh, the AD build. He may be going attack speed AP build. Meanwhile, Garen up top getting the kill off on Raiden. Garen doing what Garen does best, which is using R and winning fights. Rise here doing a little bit of harassment damage to Zora. Zora having to go up top. There is the ping there, as you can see. They ping for them as he's coming up top. Meanwhile, Mip Mip Lowell doing his own blue. Although he could actually no, he is opting to say, "Hey, come here, Rise. I'm gonna give you the blue." Zora Hound covering for Nocturne before Nocturne gets back, and <laughs> Mimi has to actually watch out because he may take too much damage there. Oh, it's getting tethered back, unfortunately, but he's going to be able to get it. And Master Yu getting taken out once again. Master Yu is now one and three, opting to go Avarice Blade and Rejuvenation Bead, which is a little bit strange nonetheless. However, we're at five to two. The only the gold game though is only 400 gold ahead for blue teams, so not that great. However, Ramp <laughs> GH Panther is on a rampage now, going out there just destroying that Nunu. We have, uh, of course, Malzahar putting a ward there in the top rush, making sure that uh, Udu does not come around for a gank. And he also, let's see, does he have another ward? No, he does not. So only one more, although he does have Callus, which allow him to sustain. Zora should kill that creep, though, so the respawn starts happening. However, he's going to come bottom and try to go around. There is no ward, so they don't know he's coming. Putting a box in there to set up. And uh, he should really go in. I don't know why he's waiting. They were, he was so low. Waited way too long for that, unfortunately. Zora here getting set up, trying to do a gank. However, he is using his Q, though, just to blindly look. And he did feel something, so he knew someone was in there. Despite the fact that Master Yu was outside. Raiden and low again. Raiden now sporting... A, a level two boots and a Doran shield. He much better go at Madrid's, although he is way out of position now. He is going to absorb that, but it may not be enough. There's the fear. He should back off. There's no way he's going to win that fight at all. Arturo is Arturo. Arturo's ultimate is not down. His spell sheet's all down. However, taking out that little thing. There's the oh, there's the ultimate, but not going to be enough. From Raiden's, unfortunately. Arturo probably could have killed Raiden's if he hit him a couple times with auto attacks and then ulted them right there. There is a slain though there in middle, killing the Malzahar. And looking down here, bottom, GH Panther and I'm not even gonna say Kinnon. <laughs> They're pushed back a little bit. Again, no ward there. It looks like uh, there is a Jack and Box though, so they wouldn't know. Oh, there's the ultimate from Nunu though. Lots of damage though from uh, Kinnon there. It looks like a possible double kill. Yeah, so they did take out bottom quite handily, no problem. Arturo does get the kill on top, so now it's 10 to 2, and the lead is almost 3,000 gold, 2.3k gold lead. No towers yet, and they should really go and push for Dragon. They have this lead here, they have down Udyr here for the for uh, the jungle, and uh, they could get this tower easily and then go push for that Dragon. They have the ward there. Let's see if they actually go and do that. So they're, they're pinging to come around here. And they should really come around, check to see if anybody's there, and then go down to Dragon. Looks like Master Yi is headed middle there. Master Yi going for his level 2 boots, it's, boots, it seems like. Here comes Shaco, though. Oh, but Shaco not actually counting on the exhaust there. Having to, de having to deceive to actually make sure... Deceive and use his clone to make sure that he doesn't actually die. I don't know what he's doing! There goes the ignite. Not enough at all. Oh boy, there he's gonna get him. He's gonna get him because there's the <laughs> there's the ward. There's the fear, and he does take him down. So he does get the killing spree from Garen. And here comes the possible gank. Although I don't know what Mister Fails are doing, completely. And then a nice flash there from Malzahar getting away. 
he just kind of walked past like, hey, I think he got uh, silenced, so he couldn't actually use abilities, so his character just walked up. Now GH Panther dude doing some nice harass, although does need to watch out because here comes Malzahar. There's the slow off, and there's the silence as well as all the abilities. He is in a lot of trouble now. However, <laughs> Cannon coming from the site, a nice bind to stop Master Yi there. So that definitely worked out in his favor. They're going to check. They did get Dragon. Again, extending that lead. It's 12 to 4. Howard, right, is still early game. Anything can happen. Again, if we look down here at, at items, Shaco almost has his uh, his uh, lantern finished. Udyr going for a more tanky build, less you know, just getting his dodge boots and then ruby crystal. Most likely going to get a heart of gold. That is a, a typical build for Udyr when he goes tanky. Is a heart of gold for that passive uh, ex gain, and then going something like wits end into um, a randuin's omen and atmins that kind of stuff. So a little bit of skirmish here middle, just everybody poking at each other, nothing uh, too out of the ordinary. We flip back here, GH Panther going bottom, using his uh, ultimate there to clear out these creeps, getting that mana back. Machiro coming back top, just missing Shaco who is in the brush. There we go. Raven's in spawn, I'm not sure if he's waiting for something or if he's AFK. If he is indeed AFK, we may have to shut this down a little early, but I just really wanted to give you guys an idea of what all the user interface looked like and everything. You can see everybody's uh, how much time is left or how long is left. You can see the little cooldown meters. I didn't actually see anything about him having to go AFK. But there's a little skipper here. Kidding a little bit out of position. There's the ultimate. Is there going to be enough damage? Master Yi, oh, gets teleported with the... Gets teleported and Master Yi is able to take him out. And now Mr. Fails is out of position. Has Malefic Visions on him. But here comes GH Panther, almost able to take him out. Saving Rise, no problem. Pushing middle now. Here goes Udyr with his stun stance. Flash from Nunu, gets him out. No problem there. Having to watch out for that passive damage done. Oh, nice bind there. GH coming in to do some good damage there on Nunu. Nunu almost, Nunu does get taken out. And up top, looks like Shaka was taken by Arturo as well. Nicely done as well. As you can see here, it looks like, uh, it looks like GH is building towards either a, 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 a Ryle's Christian Scepter or a lot of ages. He has the items for both. And he could finish it out or just keep the catalyst here for the mana cost and just get some HP and then finish out the Crystal Scepter for the slow. Either one is viable, depending on what he wants to do. If he wants to use this just for the mana, I've seen people do that all the time and just completely forgo the Rod of Ages. He is level 11. That is about the ideal time to get a Rod of Ages uh, for it to actually stack up all the way. Yeah, there is Nocturne is in fact AFK, unfortunately. Let's see if I can actually... I can't speak to them. That's right, I can't speak to them because it's two and a half minutes behind. We are 16 minutes and 40 minutes into the game. If this goes to 20 minutes and they surrender, then they will. If not, I will simply just end the game early. So yeah, let's see here. Champion items. Okay, so if we hit that then, we can actually see the gold amount. I wonder if there's a hotkey for that. So if we look at gold amount, GH Panther is at 4,828. Malzahar is at 4,024. And these don't look like you can order them, which is a little bit unfortunate. Perhaps they could do that so you could order them quickly. A nice bind there off on Master Yi. Master Yi getting caught out of position is going to get taken down there by GH, GH Panther. Godlike after dying that one time bottom. And now is 7 1 and 3 with 48 creep kills. Who has the most creep kills? It looks like the most creep kills goes to Malzahar at 87, with second place going to Rise at 74. Keep in mind, although he is 7 1 and 3, he was dual bot lane, which is accounted for the lack of minions. Same with Kinnon. Kinnon having 49 minions versus uh, versus the counterpart lane who has. Uh, oh, he has 48 as well. Oh, yeah, because Nunu was taking those. So they're pushing up into the jungle there. Looks like Meep Meep is going to go for blue. However, he does have to be mindful because Shaco could come look for it. Shackle very good at handling 1v1 uh, confrontations. And Mimi, Meep Meep is only one level ahead. So they're pushing up there. 
for that tower. Doing some harassment damage there, not too bad. We'll see if they surrender in two minutes. If they don't surrender in two minutes, I'm just going to end it. But I wanted to, of course, give you guys a good view of what is going on. So that's escape. How do I go from spectator? Okay, so if I want to just return to spectator, like not actually focusing on one person, I just hit escape. All right. And is there a hotkey to turn to purple or blue? Nope. Just that. All right. Most of the time, guys, and I can't, I keep doing that. Most of the time, you're going to want to just simply on spectator. If you're going to spectate a match for any kind of shoutcasting purposes. Oh, Master Yi taking on Udyr. Udyr not able to take that damage there. However, baiting him into one tower attack. Kinnon, though, coming from the side, possibly he's going to ulti. Doesn't look like... is. Does he have the ulti, though? There's the ulti. Ulti off on him. However, not going to be able to get the last Q and stun him yet again. Sort of a wasted ulti for only one person, unfortunately. Yep, lol minion. So tell me, guys, what are your impressions of this so far? How do you like this? How do you like how it ends and how do you like how it... How it functions as you can see there's will be a little bit more a uh, use in uh, I think hotkeys for turning certain things off I think for example okay so there we go so I can turn fog aware off and on with F and I can go up there okay there we go GH Panda taking out the tower Radiant though is back in the game however it is going to actually feed a nice <laughs> nice bind there to actually take him out however Garen does go down in fact to, to uh, Malzahar unfortunately so let's see, any other? Okay, so I can actually ping by hitting G and then pinging a spot. Is there any other ones I can find? Let's see here. Hmm. Oh, that's, oh, so I can do that and actually see what, what his stats are by hitting C. So guys, if you hit C, if you hit, oh, what? Okay, I'm on blue now. So I did do something. Let's see, let's see if I can do that, okay. So, to cycle through the views, you hit V. So, V for views. You can cycle to blue, purple, or all. So, that's the V for views, guys. And I'll put, like, a link to all these down in the description so that you guys can can get to know it. Uh, but, you, as we can see here, GH Panther going in on uh, Shaco. Possibly going to be able to take Shaco's shadow. However, I don't think he's going to be able to fight that Malzar at all. Getting away, though. Malzar having to flash, though, now with uh, Udir and Ken in there. And is out of position there. A slight miscalculation with that flash. Nocturne should really go in there. There's the fear there. But is able to take out that. And now Udyr is in trouble. Having to flash away there. Here comes Arturo though from the side. Gets a nice silence off there on Malzahar. Is it going to be enough though combined with the ulti to kill him? We'll see. No, he's going to have to be forced back. However, he's going to come in here. Silence again to Raidens. Is he going to ulti one of them? Nope. Having to force back again with that minion damage. And with the passive damage there from Malzahar. Probably not going to be able to take him down. So 19 to 7, 28,000 gold to 20,000 gold. There is the, the attempt at a surrender vote. Oh, almost. He almost got his ultimate. It looks like. Oh, and he's going to get feared. And he's going to get ulted underneath the tower. Going, taken out. So it's 28,000 gold to 21,000. Two towers for blue team. No for purple team. And they're down by 11 kills. Not good at all. Turn Frog War back off. Let's see. We're at 102 mini kills now for Malzahar. By far the highest. Oh, no, no. Rise is at 99. Not bad. As When we look at gold, though, we have 7,000 for GH Panther. Let's just assign this to someone. Who's going to be the most interesting? Oh, yeah, he's dead. That's why I was like, I was like, who is this focusing on? That jack, that jack in the box? He was dead. Um, and uh, we have here 3,475 gold for Nunu. So he is definitely the lowest with six deaths, which would be exactly why that would happen. And Rai is teleporting top there to defend against the Master Yi. Then pushing middle here. They have three here, possibly getting a gank with Raiden's. Raiden's does have his ultimate up, although does not have his summoner spells. Going to find this Udir out of position. They could have possibly feared him, but he looks like he was looking up top. And Arturo does take out Master Yi there. Having to be forced back. Raiden should really be careful because they can, he can get in a pinch here. He's in between four people. I don't see how he's going to live. Here comes the stuns. Raiden is in trouble. Having to use his ghost. Does ghost that away. Poke has to also flash. 
There are now four here. They do have a ward, so they do know their whole entire team is there, except for a Panther, who is down bottom. Looks like they were going for, of course, a Dragon. So we're still only eight. We're 8,000 gold away, which is a lot. And uh, 12 kills, which is a lot as well. So I'm really liking this interface. It's really great. Currently, it is only for custom games. You cannot use it for any normal or ranked games. And you cannot pick the player that you want to actually uh, spectate. It's just for the actual game itself. But this will be really good. GH Panther going legendary. And then getting a tower. And then, oh man, this is just a massacre at this point. Mr. Fail is picking up Zora Hound. And now Master Yi getting taken out. There is the ace. Nicely done. Only losing one person. Master Yi getting Ken in there with the help of the tower. 33,000 gold. They are up by 10,000. There is the surrender, guys. Well, GG, nicely done by uh, Team Blue. And of course, it actually locks me into the score victory screen as well. Let's see if there's any kind of post screen that I can actually see. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at the spectator mode. If you guys want to see more about spectator mode or have specific questions that you would like me to answer in a follow-up video, please let me know in the description below and the comments and all that description, pfft, the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to, of course, give it a like, favorite, whatever you want. This has been Smokeify out. I will see you guys later. You, I cannot do my exits.